super important. Leave it to Greg and Mike to get it all sorted. The sources are suspect, but it's good for a laugh. The Sunday paper, Sunday papers podcast. Three, two, one. Read all, right. all about it. Read. You're that? gonna read. We're, We're reading about it early. Read all yes. about it. An atopical news show, although it's topical with the Oscars. It is. Ladies and gentlemen, Sunday Papers comes to you. Welcome to uh, Oscar Sunday. We wait for it all year. Actors, you know, it all starts with the, the idea of some, some broken New York guy who went to NYU film school, has been Ubering for 10 years, and he has an idea. And then he and then he finds an agent and then the agent pitches it to a star and then they go pitch it to a studio and the studio green lights it. And then it goes into what they call turnaround for sometimes upwards of 10 years where uh, they can't get the funding together. They can't schedule the actors. And then finally, all also known the stars as development align. Hell, right. Development hell. And then finally, they shoot this fucking thing. And assuming it all goes well from the time you shoot it until they edit it, set up all the promo tours and the press junkets and the release. It's going to be a year and a half after you shoot it. And then it can just go away. It cannot make a ripple and it's gone. Or it can soar to the mighty heights of that Hollywood sign up above Griffith Park. And you in one night can be the toast of the town. Your ticket is punched and you will work. You will get upwards of three new development deals, each paying six figures, and you will move to Hollywood, and you will date somebody way younger than you, half your age plus seven years. That's the formula. Unless you're a woman, sometimes it's twice as old. Right. Seems to be the pattern. Yeah. Well, who is it that dates younger guys? Um, Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Keanu's, uh, Keanu Reeves' longtime girlfriend is a little older than he is, I believe. People think she's much older because Keanu, she's not in Hollywood, so she's not probably dyeing her hair jet black every day and uh, and working out in three-month training jujitsu sessions, getting ready for films. Who's, uh, who's Clooney's wife? I like her. She's all right. She's not in the business. No, international lawyer. She's uh, fantastic. Yeah. A mall? I don't and know. I don't think she's young. I think she's probably up around his age. I doubt she's as old as he is. Not well, like, you, give or you take. Rem- you remember the Google. joke? The the, the joke that uh, Amy Poehler and yeah. uh, Tina Fey made at the Oscars, and they talked about Gravity, the yeah. movie where George Clooney launches himself into space and a certain death, rather than spend time with a woman his own age. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it was so great. All right, so listen. I'm going to Google right now how old Clooney's wife is. You're going to Google how old George Clooney is. Before we do it, what is your guess on the uh, how much younger she is? Well, first of all, I'm going to guess that George Clooney is, he's got to be 62. Don't don't look it up. Don't, no, no, no. Don't look up any, come on. First we do the bet. Oh, all right. I would say he's 52 and I would say she is 46. I'm going to say she's 10 years younger. I'm going to say she's 42. And he's 52? Oh, yeah. I'm not going on. I, I, sorry. Those are your numbers. I'm going to go 10 years younger. You're going uh, six years younger? I'm going, what did I say? 62 and 54? <laughs> I think you said, didn't you say 52 and, and 44, 46? Yeah, 52 yeah. and 46. I'm going 10 years. And all right, how old? Here I go. Is I, This is so pathetic. I should know her name, but Clooney's. Uh, Clooney, mine oh. just popped up. He's 62. By the way, I meant 62. I didn't mean 52. Okay. 16 years younger. No. So you go fuck yourself. Well, I was, I nailed his age. I just was way off on her. Holy shit. I did say Amal, I think. I think I did get her Damn. name. And she took his name. I didn't know that. I thought well, she was more powerful than that. She's going to take a lot more than that someday. Oh, boy. Yeah, I um, think she's doing quite well for herself. She is. I think she does very well, and I wish them the best. Uh, I also wish the best to my brother, Bobby Fitzsimmons, on his birthday. 
He is 59 years old. Holy Three shit, my brother's almost 60. Nice. God damn. Uh, happy birthday, Bobby. I'll have to give he him a call today. He seems younger. He seems a lot younger than that. Everybody has always thought my brother was younger than me and better looking than me and smarter than me. You showed him. Well, he's a, uh, he's a funny dude. I can't, I don't know too many people that make me laugh more than him. He, he is fucking, we had so many good laughs as kids. I just remember, uh, the, I bet I didn't finish my thought. I go, you showed him you have a podcast and you're talking about him. <laughs> um, I just remember, <laughs> I don't know if it was your wedding weekend. It was some scorcher and probably, you probably have 10 or 12 of these memories, but he would not ride in a car, which was using air conditioning <laughs> because of the environment. Yeah. He was, he worked for Greenpeace for a lot and of years. People were like sweating through three layers. Like if you had your shirt and your suit jacket on, you were you were sweating through the suit jacket. Yeah, like it was crazy. Yeah, my wedding. I think it was a hundred degrees on my wedding, and we got married in an old stone church. Oh. So it was like a pizza oven. Um, but uh, yeah, the I was thing, there in the goddamn polyester suit you made me wear. I made all all my groomsmen had to wear shark skin suits. You guys look slick. Oh, my God. Um, and then the bachelor party, you remember we were in Vegas and we got on the elevator and we were on a very high floor. And then these girls got on a couple floors below us. So we had a pretty long ride down to the lobby and we were at the Hard Rock Hotel. And uh, the girls uh, get on and they're cute and they're about our age. And uh, one of them has wet hair. And uh, there's that awkward silence after the doors close. And there's like three or four of us guys and the two girls and he looks at her and he goes, uh, you shower? <laughs> and she goes, yeah. And he goes, you wash the hair? And she goes, yeah. And you got to understand, my brother's so good looking, he gets away with this shit. And he goes, did you get the undercarriage? And she fucking smiles. And then everybody in the elevator laughed like all the way down to the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that keeps me on edge, though, is... He's really funny. He's really good looking and charming. Also a little undercurrent of creepy. A little bit. Really? I think so. But I'm not saying he's a creep at all. I'm saying when he has the long hair and and he's like, oh, his eye contact, which is the Fitzsimmons family somehow inherited the eye contact gene. There's too much of it. Yeah. And with you... I now know I, I'm no longer thrown by your eye contact because I know you're not even hearing a word I'm saying and your <laughs> your mind is somewhere else. It's the opposite of being too focused. You present as overly it's, focused, yeah. but you're you're just locked in because it's almost like looking away to think, but you look in people's eyes to think. It's overcompensating Bobby, though, for the ADD, yeah. Bobby, though, the eye contact is going, so it's a long haired one could say sometimes the hair looked a little charles mancini and then the eye contact while saying get the undercarriage so, yeah 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 what, what and you have to question the creepy part <laughs> yeah. uh all right happy birthday bobby also uh if i'm with my mom in the future when this airs i will be wait on the 10th will i still be in no i will be back and I'm in San Diego now. You will be in Europe on the 10th, right? I will. I will. I'm going there. Uh, well, I'm there. I'm there right now. You're there right now. I'm there right now. And hopefully some people send in some recommendations for Amsterdam on the way there. You know, I was going to say it's also my stepmother passed away, but it's her birthday. And I'm wondering, because more and more, like, has there been a good book or movie that has tapped into how much... Um, audio recordings and video recordings and like not evidence, but their, their fingerprints are still around. Like I know a lot of people don't erase Facebook accounts of people who have passed away. Right. Right. A lot of people hold on to the voicemail messages yeah, of people who have passed away. Right. There, there's a, there's a great thing to be done with that. I, I'm, I'm thinking, and I wonder if it's already, it seems like low hanging fruit. A movie about that. Maybe it is. Oh, someone... I remember one where there's a woman who has her husband's vo- uh, 
uh, voicemail, and she calls it all the time after he dies. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Because, I mean, think about all the books and movies we, you know, that are old school that we grew up with where, like, it's letters or it's letters from the from wars, you know the what notebook. I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and it's mementos and all of that. Well, now you're, like, hearing them full of life, and uh, even, even if it's a an Instagram account or a website that has, like, messages from the departed or something. Or what if it was just like notes in your dead spouse's mouth that they wrote to you? Well, now you're counting on people having listened to last week's episode. <laughs> and and do you keep the cranium and you open and you open it, you pull up, you, you put your f- two fingers through the eyes of the skull, you pull it up and you take the note out and you read a nice little thing. You have to go back. You have to go back and listen. The skull is charred from the uh, from the airplane explosion. So it, you got to be careful opening it. Story about my dad writing a note and putting it in his mouth because he thought um, he was going to die on a well, plane. Well, no, I have a whole idea. I won't get into it, but I have an idea about this that I'm going to I'm going to eventually raise money and and uh, retire on this great idea that I have about people dying. That sounds like years of pro- procrastination, as yep. we call it. Yep. Um, also, we're going to talk about the Oscars in a minute. Uh, the yes. logo this week comes from Craig Godet. Uh, who I believe did last week's as well. He is uh, a master, it. killing it. Look at us of the Photoshop. I like me. I like me with a with a. What do I have? A Van? It's not a Van Dyke. I guess it's just a beard and mustache, but it looks different. Well, you know who those that couple is, right? Is it Ben Affleck and J Lo? Yes. Oh, okay. And I'm I'm J Lo, and I like me like that. I always thought when I was younger. I, I don't think I get away with it now, but when I was younger, I think I could have been a pretty good trans person. It's never too late. I had a thin remember, body, very little hair. It's on hair. the inside. What do you mean pretty good? You mean, so now you're going to be, uh, it's on appearances? You're going to be that shallow? Couldn't you be a good trans person no matter what you looked like, Greg? No. No, no. when I watched that show Transparent, I was I ne- I ne- I was always like, this is, I, you want to be open-minded to trans people, but seeing a, an, a, an older man, he wasn't even a middle-aged man. What's What's his name? Jeffrey Tambor. Jeffrey Tambor in drag. I just it was hard. It was very hard. And they and God bless that show. The more you watched it, the more it didn't seem weird. But Imagine the, if you didn't uh, you didn't you're a total outsider. You didn't know anything. Like also, what's going to be another hit show is uh, about this 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 patriarch and family is going to be trans. Oh, what actor are you thinking of? Oh, the one who plays Hank Kingsley. Um, <laughs> no, I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah, I, I don't think people are going to be on board that. Yeah. It was good, though. Yeah. Uh, the song this week is from Emmett Hall. Fantastic. Nice. Really nice. Thank you, Emmett. And uh, if you want to send songs or uh, banners in for our show, we are now on our third year, and every week we've had a song, an original song, and an original poster. Uh, send them to FitzDogRadio at gmail.com. We love your submissions and are appreciate we not in you. Our, are we not in our fourth year? Is it fourth? Well, oh, it started during the pandemic. So we started in, around January 2020. So you're right. It's four It's four years and a month. I got a lock down those dates, I realized. Um, like, you know, like, you know, we have 9-11 and, and, you know, you have these dates in your head. It's a little blurry to me when the pandemic started, but it was April 2020? No. March. I remember I had a St. Patrick's Day show that was canceled because of the pandemic, and it was canceled four days before the show. So around March 13th is when the real lockdown started. All right. Yeah, I'm Googling it. You remember we we had our final dinner? We knew it was going to be our final dinner. Yeah. And it was a whole gang of us went to Cha Cha Chicken by the beach, and it was an outdoor cafe. And Zach Galifianakis came, but he wouldn't get out of his car. He just pulled... <laughs> He pulled up and he rolled down his window and hung out with us for 20 minutes. I know. He wasn't really afraid. He just had kind of missed dinner. Um, oh, oh I thought put, he was afraid. Well. I think he was afraid. I, I'm looking up cha-cha chicken. Uh, and yeah, because it was, we knew it was our was final dinner That was probably March out. 18th, I'm guessing, the cha-cha chicken. I don't have it here somehow. I don't know what happened. Uh, anyway, we, I also got some tour dates coming up. La Jolla, yeah. my final night in La Jolla is tonight. 
at the Comedy Store, and then Hollywood Improv, St. Patrick's Day show, March 16th. Mike Gibbons will be performing stand-up comedy. I'll do a short thing. It's not going to go well. You talked about bombing on the last pa- podcast and how much it hurts. I, I This sounds like the biggest brag ever, but I haven't ever really... I also lower the bar so much that I'm not a stand-up and everyone's so kind. But uh, yeah, I, I read... I'm a writer up there, really, reading ideas. But uh, it, it may be my first bomb, so it's going to be interesting. I would love that. I <laughs> would love that. That I would be dying in the back. Because I told you about the, that show last week that I bombed out at Emerson. But the guy that opened for me, Jacob Feldman, who's a great comic. He's oh, a I young guy. Jacob. I've been mentoring him for probably eight years. I've been helping this kid out. I, he's getting stronger and stronger. He, you think I bombed. This kid was dying. And I was laughing my ass off. Partly out of nervous laughter that like I was about to walk into that same shit storm yeah. he was in. Um. Also, did coming to Boca Raton, Florida, April 3rd, Tampa, Florida, April 4th through the 6th, and then Mamaronek, New York, May 31st. Tickets at FitzDog.com. We also want to tell you that Sunday Papers is supported by Game Time. Yes, uh, look, sir. You always get frustrated when you're looking for tickets because you think that you waited too long. And a lot of times what Game Time shows you is that ticket prices can go down and they can let you know, and you can take advantage of flash deals and zone deals, whether you're talking about comedy, uh, theater, live music. They got it all. Oh, that that was my game, always was waiting, waiting. I remember buying Dodge, when it was pretty new, I remember apps like that. I remember buying Dodger tickets um, in the parking lot, but you had to jump through so many hoops. The other, the other sites or apps weren't set up. Up for people that liked gaming the system like that, and along comes Game Time, who knows exactly how to do it, and um, we love them. All right, so I just popped up Los Angeles on the app. We got Nuggets at Lakers tomorrow. I guess this is a. I guess it's heating up a little bit. Well, this guy on the Nuggets. I don't know anything about basketball, but I read an article about the uh, the one of the players. I must be the center. The guy's huge. He's from Eastern Europe. Everybody who knows basketball yes. is no, no, screaming no. I've seen at clips their of radio right now. I guess he's the uh, biggest thing in the in the uh, NBA. I Pay think to he see won. the freak. Pay to see the freak. Well, I think right he won now, the MVP w- twice or something. You'd see 183, 183 to go uh, Nuggets at Lakers tomorrow. You'll watch that. That'll go down. I like pressing the discover button because it tells me also like what's going on in town. Like Here come the stones coming up. Uh, we got baseball coming up. We got... The Gold Cup, Mexico. What is this one? Um, Mexico versus Paraguay. When is that? March Nicol- 3rd, 2 p.m. Nikola Nicol- Djokic, a Serbian. Um, he's nicknamed the Joker. Uh, regarded as yes. one of the greatest players and centers of all time. And one of the greatest draft steals in NBA history. I think well, they got him for go. no money. But he comes from this town where they've like, ch- they got this this program where they have produced all these amazing uh, players from uh, from Serbia. So I'm sorry, is the sponsor Serbia or Game Time? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Anyway, you are going to get last minute deals, flash deals, zone deals. It's easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event. You get the views from the seats. One of my favorite things about it is the price you see is the total that you'll pay. Unlike every other one where it's like, oh, that looks like a steal. Oh, wait, it's twice the price. Not with game time. It gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code PAPERS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code PAPERS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. guaranteed. Uh, also, support for Sunday Papers comes from Delete Me, and Delete Me is. Uh, Yes, please. There is a time and a place for a business to emerge, and this is it. Delete me. I mean, if you've been the victim of an identity theft, if you've been scammed, if you've been harassed, are you annoyed by spam and robocalls? I mean, look, your personal information, it's out there. Uh, It's We're easy targets. But now with Delete Me, you can uh, remove 
personal information that you don't want online. And they they go out, they find it, they show you what they've done. They um, it's a subscri- it's a subscription service. Yep, and, I'm on, uh, you, I'm you on get the website of- right now. It's so easy. You go there. There's a search engine removal. The digital footprint enhanced. They have a data breach scan. It has all these um, options on the website, and you delete yourself from the internet. You want to remove, for example, there's a lot of places out there I found because all of a sudden they give me feedback that my phone number was out there unnecessarily yeah. in, many, in many locations and sites, and I wanted it removed. Done. Yeah, so it's amazing, and uh, you, you know they 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 uh, it's it isn't a one time service. It's working for you all the time, constantly monitoring. Uh, data brokers hate delete me. Uh, when you sign up, they go back and they they scrub all your personal information from these data broker platforms. Uh, so it's it's great. Take control of your data and keep your private life private by signing up for Delete Me. Now, at a special discount for our listeners today, get 20% off your Delete Me plan when you go to joindeleteme.com slash papers. Use promo code papers at checkout. The only way to get 20% off is to go to joindeleteme.com slash papers and enter code papers at checkout. J-O-I-N-D-E-L-E-T-E-M-E.com papers. There we go. Nice. Real um, nice. Should we get to this Oscar ballot that you're so excited about? We're going to go through right. the Oscar I picks. Pen. I have my nerdy. Meanwhile, I'm not even into these Oscars at all. Hasn't this felt, and I know the strikes delayed it, hasn't this felt like the longest award season? And it's why they hate us. Like this self-congratulatory, it's just all the vanity. I hate it. Anyway, I love it. Let's fill out the app. All right. I mean, the uh, the ballot, I mean. Let's do the ballot. Greg, best picture. We're going to start with that one. Uh, well, it's funny. Now they nominate pretty much every movie that was made in 2023. There's like there are 10 one, pictures. Two, six, seven, eight, ten. There used to be like five. And now I think the publicist got in and they go, well, we want our picture to be nominated. So you got to. So they broaden it out. But really, there's only a few in contention. Read I'm gonna read. Few. I'm gonna read all of them, and we'll just be like some. We'll just be like, okay. nope. So, American Fiction. Did you see it? Saw it. Liked it. Not a winner. Exactly. Anatomy of a Fall. Loved it, but it's uh, it's too foreign. People, people loved good- it, and I think the writer should have known what happened at the end, and the writer doesn't even know. Barbie. Barbie was a jaunt. It was like a sugar high. I think people got excited about it, but it doesn't stay with you. No. It didn't stay with me even when it was happening. The Holdovers. Fantastic movie. Uh, It's already been made. Dead Poet Society. Saw it. Move on. Could have been an after school special. I love Giamatti. Don't get me wrong. Yes. I I don't think Alexander Payne is that funny. So the funny moments kind of rub me the wrong way. You know what? I started watching, by the way, and we'll talk about this another time, but um, I'm committed, man. I'm going to fucking finish The Wire. God damn it. Oh. I will come over and and binge watch it with you anytime. Okay. I watched four yesterday with my stupid oh my fucking God. cold it's in so bed. Bingy. It's so bingy. I'm only on season two, which everyone says is the worst season. So, but when he tries to be funny, it, it doesn't work that well. But you, I excuse you know it. he's British, right? No, Simon. Yeah. The lead of the Wire is British. Oh no 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 him yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. no I thought you meant the creator. Okay, he was Baltimore journalist. Okay, here we go. Killers of the Flower Moon. Uh, that's a huge contender. It won't win. Uh, I think it should. I think it's people have such a problem with long movies these days. And you mean then there's Killer of the- My Afternoon. Yeah, I do. <laughs> when it works, I'm I'm sorry. When it's uh when it's Lawrence of Arabia, I didn't think it was too long, and it was longer than Killers of the Flower Moon. I think. I was fine with the length. I thought it was one of his great movies. I, I would I would vote for it, but I don't think it's going to win. Well, you're a size queen. You like everything uh, pretty long. Maestro. Ugh, walked out. Haven't seen it yet. If it wins, it's going to win by a nose. Yeah, Oppen- see here, we're going to make a, gonna make a some movie. Yeah, we're going to make some music. You got that? Smoke, 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 smoke. 
Oh. By the way, and I know Bill Burr has talked about it a lot, and so has Chappelle, but the selective targeting of who's like uh, co-opting other cultures, and I mean, was it not old Jewish guys who were like, "Hey, I got a bri- I haven't seen the movie, and I do- I should say I don't know what I'm talking about right now, but is um is uh what what's the what, what's Maestro? The fucking, yeah, Maestro, but is um. The goddamn musical. Why am I spacing out? The Jets versus the... West Side Story? Is West Side Story a bunch of old Jewish guys who said, let's take Romeo and Juliet and put it up in Spanish Harlem in those areas. And uh, who will they be? Well, Puerto Ricans. And what's their thing? They love knives. They love knives. And then what's the other gang? <laughs> yeah. You know, you know. oh yeah, they're fucking Mix and there's a Mick cop and, you know, there's other... And uh, it, it was... Just cliche fest. Yes. And so fucking stupid. I I get I got outraged in West Side Story. Love outraged. West Side Story. Ugh. I Alan, can sing every word. What is the Puerto Rican girl? Every What's going to be her role? What's the Puerto Rican role? Uh, what's, uh, oh, she's going to get pregnant, obviously. Yeah, okay, that's it. Right. Okay. So now let's just connect the dots to our fucking cliched, stereotypical, and, and these old Jewish guys are going to write in the voice yeah. of these Puerto Ricans yeah. and everything. Where's that outrage? And now suddenly outrage? the guy who wrote it can't be depicted by somebody who's not Jewish. No, and then uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, there was also a lot of people saying that that was cultural appropriation because why is Scorsese direct? you know, I don't know. I thought it was a good movie. Whatever. No, you know, that's where it gets weird with history. Like, I'm being told, I have this idea that it, it involves World War II, but I'm being told, like, oh, no, you need a, a Japanese partner in this because you can't be writing this. I'm like, I wh- what? Yeah. I'm like, so Doris Kearns can't write about our founding fathers because she's a woman? Like, what are you fucking talking? You have to be that person to write about an yeah. historical occurrence? It's crazy. Is What's that the next? end of the podcast? What's I'm next? out of steam. Uh, Oppenheimer. That's the uh, winner. Let's continue. Oppenheimer's the winner. It's been it's been winning everything at all the other award shows, and that's and Hollywood takes their cues from the Golden Globes and the Writers Guild Awards and the SAG Awards, and and they're, it's going to win. I'll also say it's the best movie I saw. Uh, past Lives. Nope. All right, Pass. I saw past I saw Past Lives, and I, I went heard it was on great. Reddit. I went on Reddit, and it was good. And I went on Reddit and someone, (laughs) this woman goes, all right, listen, it was good, but I showed up here to cry and it didn't really get me the way I wanted to. Anyway, everyone was dying laughing. One comment down below is, then the movie you should have showed up for is Us and Them, which I talked about last week. Us and Them is another, it's subtitled, it's another foreign movie about the same thing, like what, what could it have been? And it is when you see us and them compared to past lives, it's like seeing a rather like simple portrait and then then an amazing piece of art. All right, listen, this isn't Siskel and Ebert. Let's rip through these. Poor things. No. I already said the winner. I already said the winner. Okay, I'm last one because I think I might watch it tonight. Zone yeah. of interest. Have you seen Didn't it? Didn't see it. I want not to see interested. It. Best Zone director. Of not interested. I'm gonna read them really fast, rapid fire. Best director. You got Glazer, Zone of Interest. You got Lanthimos, Poor Things. You got Nolan Oppenheimer, yeah, Scorsese that's the winner. Killers. Nolan will win. Scorsese's in second place, I'm guessing, but Nolan will win. Newsflash for Greg, there is no second place. Actress in a leading role. Annette Bening for Nyad, Lily Gladstone, Killers of the Flower Moon, Sandra for Anatomy of a Fall, Carrie Mulligan, Maestro, Emma Stone, Poor Things. I think Emma Stone will come in second. I think the winner will be Gladstone, the woman from uh, Killer of the Flower Moon, because she yes. was she was great and she's a little ethnic and they like that. All right. We are the same same thing, although I have to say Emma Stone was un- I didn't I love heard. Poor Things. Yeah. She's unbelievable in it. Yeah. Okay. Actor in a leading role. Cooper, uh, Coleman Domingo, Paul Giamatti, Cillian Murphy. Is it Cillian? Uh, Jeffrey Wright. Cillian Murphy, he's on fire. 60 Minutes did a profile on him. Uh, he's got another big movie that's coming out. Uh, he's the guy right now. I'm going to go Jeffrey Wright. Oh, he was fucking great in that. And I'm not going to explain why. God, he was why. great in that. All right. Okay, so Mike, Greg. All right, we finally have a difference. Actress in a supporting role, Emily Blunt, 
Danielle Brooks, American Ferrara, Jody Foster, Divine Joy Randolph from the Holdover. She Emily won the Blunt. Golden Globe. Emily Blunt. You uh, really like white people in most of these things. That's right. Uh, no, I just picked a Native American woman, Gladstone. No, I know that was one. Uh, I'm going to go. All right, so that's you. Shit, I want to differ from you, though. I don't think Emily Blunt's. I don't think she's going to get it. I think uh, Divine's going to get it. Oh, there you go. Strong choice. I can see that happening. Jeffrey Wright, Divine. There's a pattern. Actor in a supporting. Um, by the way, this is commentary on Hollywood and how fearful they are here. Act and and they were great in these roles. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think Emily Blunt, who is also, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't think she was as great actually. Actor in a supporting role: Sterling K. Brown, Robert De Niro, Robert Downey Jr., Ryan Gosling, Mark Ruffalo. Robert De Niro. I am wondering when the voting was cut off because. If it was after the Golden Globes, no one would vote for Ryan Gosling again. But I think the same thing might happen. Why? What happened with Ryan Gosling? He was the only actor to win for Barbie. None of the women won. Oh, no shit. That's hilarious. I love it. I <laughs> yeah. love it. Maybe Ferrara, Ferraro's won something, maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. but, but Margot Robbie did not win. That's hilarious. She deserved it. Great feat. I'm, I'm going to go Ryan feet. Gosling. Yeah. All right. We're differing on a lot now. Original screenplay, Anatomy of a Fall, The Holdovers, Maestro, May, December, Past Lives. Past Lives. Shit. It's either that or Anatomy of a Fall, which would come in second, you're thinking. Uh, I'm you already gonna... criticized the ending of Anatomy of a Fall, so you can't vote for that. No, but people are not caring, and they think that's because it's very French. It's like it's up to you. The, you know, here's my script, but it's like it's art. I will answer no questions. What, yeah, what do you yeah. think? Yeah. Uh, I, what I think, I think you should do more work. Um, but past lives, they're both foreign. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go past lives also because oh, I don't okay. think we can stop this Asian. I was going to say tidal wave. That's the wrong thing. This momentum. Uh, Asian films have been killing it in killing Hollywood. It. In awards. Adapted screenplay, American fiction, Barbie, Oppenheimer, Poor Things, The Zone of Interest. Oppenheimer. Yeah, I'm going to go with that also. You know what I think he did? And I do think when I saw Oppenheimer, it was hard to follow the bomb. Uh, he delayed the bomb, even though a third of the movie's timeline took place after the bomb. He delayed right. the bomb, you know, as much as he could. I thought that, I thought that was well. Skillful. That's how the book. Well, I read the book actually before the movie came out, and uh, I thought it did a pretty good job covering it. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff that was left out, and there was a lot of stuff that was romanticized. But um, I thought the timing, the pacing was similar to the book. Then it shouldn't win. Sounds like the book should win. Right. International feature. Uh, should we no, skip that? No, we don't that? need to do all that. Oh, you're I not going to go done. for Lo Capitano? I think we're done. Animated feature. Ugh, I don't care. Documentary. How about this? I love this. You have to vote based on the title. Documentary feature. You ready? Yeah. Bobby Wine, The People's President, The Eternal Memory, Four Daughters, To Kill a Tiger, 20 Days in Maripol. 20 Days of Maripol. Shit, I was going to say that too. Fuck, because you've heard of it. That's the one you heard of. NPR just did a piece on it, yeah. Uh, I'm doing it there because I think we're going to bet money. All right, original score. You ready? American Fiction, Indiana Jones, Killers of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, Poor Things. I don't know the movie. I don't know the music, any, any of those. Did he do Han? Did Hans Zimmer? He works with no. Did Hans Zimmer do Oppenheimer? Yeah, I'm gonna say Opp I'm gonna say Oppenheimer, just because it's gonna sweep. Oh, good. I'm going with a different one. I think Robbie Robertson is nominated for Killer. Oh shit. Okay. Or he, no. Oh, maybe. Or was he musical like the guy who picked the song? I uh, know. I'm going. I, I'm sticking with that. You can't. Original song. Forget it. Cin cinematography. El Conde, I should see El Conde. It's it was it was up before too. Killers of Flower Moon, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Poor Things. Killer of Flower Moon. I'm going Oppenheimer. 
Because, oh, yeah. They, because they shot so many things practical. Yeah, you're right. I'm switching. No, I'm switching. No, you're not. No, no. You can't switch based on Jesus my, my intel. Christ. Uh, forget, you want to do costume design? We know all no, of them. No, we're done. We're done. People have already, people are now listening to fucking uh, Will, Will, what's his name? And the other two bozos, Jason and Will. They're listening to those guys now. Guys right. got a hundred million dollars. What was that you called? Don't, you don't want to do editing? No. All right, wow. let's get to the front page. Hold on. I want to do one, one more fun category. We've heard of none of them. Okay. Hey, sweetie, I'm doing the podcast. It's documentary short. You ready? We just yep. have to go on names. The ABCs of book banning, the barber of Little Rock, Island in Between, the last repair shop, Nai Nai and Waipo. I'm gonna go with the bookshop. I'm going with Nai Nai and Waipo. Yeah, that was that's what I was gonna go with, but All right, moving on. I wrote all right. it all down. It's gonna be right here for our next podcast in forty weeks. Front uh, page. Give me a crinkle. Here we go. Extra, extra. We all are bombing. Extra. Someone got impatient on the movie picking. Well, I just don't know how much people give a shit about us picking movies. They give a shit oh, about the rest of it? How much are we betting, by the way? Oh, yeah. How about a 20? Okay, 20 bucks. Because uh, that, that's enough to bum me out if I lose that to you. Yeah. Actually, I would lose even if it was a handshake. I'd be bummed out. Okay, so I, I tried to pick some evergreen stories, which are stories that are not day and date and very topical. So this one I found. Right, My parents' dementia seemed like the end of joy. Then came the robots. Okay, that is either a uplifting headline, which is what the story is, or that could be the most doom and gloom. Like, I thought it couldn't get any worse. Then came the robots. Okay. <laughs> I, I pasted a lot in here because I thought it was interesting. So my mom was finally officially diagnosed with dementia in 2020. My sister and I had already figured out that my father also had dementia. He had became shouty and impulsive and his short-term memory had vaporized. We didn't even bother getting him diagnosed. Okay. <laughs> Maybe that's why he's shouty and impulsive. <laughs> yeah. If it's a slam dunk, isn't there a che isn't it a doctor's visit? Yeah, I think uh, especially <laughs> since when you get older, look, everybody's brain starts to go. Everything you just described, I completely have. And so, what's the line where you know it's dementia? And then I heard it's actually a CAT scan. They can look at your brain and see dementia. Did you know that? No, I think I think they do see that oxygen. It's not getting brain parts, and I don't know what I'm talking about. Parts of the brain are not getting oxygenated. There's like uh, here. Here's a good word. There's no activity. Nothing's firing out there. I can't remember shit. I don't remember anybody's name. I I do crossword every day. I do Sudoku's. I exercise. I don't know what else I'm supposed to do for my brain. It's just going. Yeah, I die. I mean, you'll just fade to death, but. You Can't know, wait. I told you when I got I my brain, wait. I got a brain scan. Did I tell you about that? When? So I call, I, the most innocent call ever, I call the, I, I'll move this story along, but I call our general, our place that our union, you know, and usually it's like, you know, there's an appointment like a week and a half from now or a week from now. So I said, you know, I'm smelling a uh, cigarette smoke in the office and, but people are saying there isn't, they're like, please hold. <laughs> and, and I'm like, what? I'm like, Okay. <laughs> All of a sudden, hey, Michael, um, this is uh, the uh, whatever the elevated nurse is. Like, it's like nurse. This is the nurse practitioner. And can you describe that? OK, can you come in today? I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm literally at my job and I'm like, no, no, it's not a big deal. I think the guys in animation, the animators are smoking. It's coming through my air duct. They're like, yeah, yeah, but you should come in anyway. So it's called olfactory hallucinations, right? Anyway, winds up with a brain scan. The whole reason I tell this story is a unbelievably impressive, buttoned up, beautiful Asian woman doctor, a brain doctor is hey now. looking at her computer and she goes, all right, well, it's good because they thought it might be, I forget if it's a stroke or a- Well, yeah, they say if you smell toast. I mean, that's always been the big thing. No, it's but it's not a stroke. A str there was a very interesting uh, thing- separating the two it was a seizure 
I think a seizure is when you see, hear, and sm- or you sense things that aren't there. And a stroke is when you don't, uh, when you can't sense things that are there. Yeah. I believe that's probably very barbaric, but it's something like that. Anyway, she's like, no, no, I, I, it doesn't look like you've had seizures or, you know, my, they're little micro seizures that can throw off all of a sudden. I smell something. It's not there. And I'm like, okay. And then I'm like you. I mean, everyone on this, every listener knows we are demented and we, it's a comedy of errors, what we cannot remember and uh, where we just get stymied on just simple sentences where we can't remember the word. And so I go to her, I go, uh, how does the rest of it look? Like, I mean, are things, I know you can tell now, are things firing? And so she looked at it. I'm not supposed to ask that. I'm there for one reason. And it's what it says on the paper. And she's a rigid, rigid, like professional. And she looks at it and goes, yeah, yeah, it looks good. Like, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, basically what I heard, almost literally what I heard was, uh, that's on a need to know basis. Yeah. Right, right, right. And you don't need to know what I'm yeah. saying. Just keep living. Go, go, go yeah. outside and have some fun. Go go play with the truck. It was weird when she said goodbye. She's like, hug your kids today. <laughs> that was weird. Okay, oh, so God. this whole story is about social robots. Yeah. The article said the torso and limbs are chubby and white. It seems to be naked except for the briefs below its pot belly. And at this point, I think they're talking about her mom. <laughs> and then, although it does not have nipples, it is only two feet tall. Its face, a rectangular screen, blinks on. Two black ovals and a ma- manga, manga smile, I don't know the word manga, manga smile appear. Hello, I'm QT, your robot friend, it says. All right. <laughs> anyway, it says this to everyone because that's its job. QT raises both arms in a touchdown gesture. The motors were. So, Greg, we have to make a bond. If I ever see this robot, and look at you confused. You just have to slice my neck open. Okay, fair enough. I'll take the same thing. If, if, if my, my family, family, if my family, they're in fucking Boca Raton having fun with the grandkids and I'm sitting at home with a fucking vacuum cleaner blinking at me, bullet in the head on the spot. If all of a sudden one day I join this Zoom and you're like, my family, we, we're going to do a three-person, a three-hander podcast. My family wants the robot to be here. I will <laughs> rush over to your house and kill you. I'll tell you what, though. You, there are a lot of lonely old people. Yep. And if this brings them comfort, God bless. Not only that, this thing will tell you, will remind you to take your medication. It right. will tell you every two hours, stand up and walk for five minutes. I mean- this is, I think this is fantastic. I love it. So this is a long article. Get this. You'd like this then because there's all of that. And then they're saying this one's different. This one isn't about that. It's not like a, you know, like a, a taskmaster and all that stuff, which keeps people on track. No doubt. This is more social. And there's a storytelling game between the person and the machine. And eventually QT will retain enough information to make the game personalized for wow. each patient. Wow. And it evolves its conversational skills and responses to people who accept it. Anyway, and it makes it so they'll accept a robot because um, a lot of them are confusing or they appear rude to people. Well, so, think about uh, it. Think about the average conversation between a grandchild or even a child of a very old person. You're going to talk about the weather, which this fucking thing will be able to get on the internet and talk about the weather. Yeah. You're going to get updates it's going to it's going to log on to the facebook pages of your grandkids and be able to tell you what they're doing, what they're saying, read you their tweets. I mean, oh. as if it's a conversation. I mean, it's it's great. I love it. And with AI now, you could be, you know, literally you could be like, "How do we think the Red Sox are going to do this year?" And it'll have an articulate yep. answer weighing all the injuries and, you know, it'll be like, you know, asking someone who's super smart in that area. Right. But I love this. They're like um it's talking about uh, the challenge for the robot because they're like people with dementia can be a tough audience. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. They get nasty. They get, but there'll be a tough audience until that 
till that fucking nine inch dildo comes out, and then they'll be like, oh, "I I love QT." <laughs> well, that's what people think who write us right into the show. That that we're we're a tough audience. These two yeah. d- demented hosts. Oh God! All right, next story. This is what I talked about last week. Some of these stories are like the clickbait, right? But I'm going to quiz you. It's, so it said, nine thing therapists do when they feel lonely. Oh. Now, I will state in advance, this is a boring list. Have you seen those accounts on Instagram, by the way, where uh, people, a woman goes, you'll never guess what, and all of a sudden a guy comes on and Betty's like, she found her dog in the thing. And then it puts up yeah, time yeah. saved. Right. Like it saved you three minutes. Yeah. That's she funny. never tells you the secret ingredient, <laughs> like, or whatever it is. Yeah. All right. So I'll spoil this by saying, don't think too hard. Okay. So nine things therapists do when they feel lonely. I think you're going to do very well on this because you've gotten this advice. Okay. I would say, uh, call a friend. All right, now I have to scan the goddamn thing. Uh, yes, I'm sure that's on there, I think. Call uh, a friend. Uh, walk in your neighborhood. Okay, so yes, send a voice text. So they try to mi- mix it up a little bit. Okay. Yes, okay. Then what? Take a walk in your neighborhood. Go people watching. Yep. Um, take a Take a yoga class. Do a fi- uh yes, it's here. Join an easy group class. Yep. Um, visit a uh, family. Um, well, flip through old photos. Go people try something. Oh, I'm reading them now. Uh, that's weird. It didn't say that. Uh, adopt a dog. Yeah, it says cuddle a pet. All right. Uh, masturbate. That's the first one, but not yourself. A, a, that's when you're people watching a stranger. <laughs> Nothing makes you lonelier than jerking off. No, come on. You, well, jerking off can fall under this general category. You, you know, some of these for depression. It's your, it's the same thing. Journal. Yes. Meditate. Uh, yes, exactly. Do a five minute loving kindness meditation um, write a list of things you're grateful for. Gratitude list. Uh, try something new was one. Connect with yourself. That's yeah. it. That's okay. that one. You got all of them. There was one though, and it's not a joke. I apologize. Uh, it was do what you used to love as a kid. I already said masturbate. Yep, you did. But like this one person remembered like they really loved swimming like in the neighborhood pool when they were little or something Isn't like that. Isn't it amazing how how much you loved jerking off as a kid and that you loved a lot of stuff as a kid. Maybe comic books, maybe watching the Mets. But over the years, oh, the Mets had a few bad seasons. I'm going to take a little break from baseball. Ah, I feel too old for comic books. Jerking off stays right by your side all I, these years. I never became a fair weather fan of that activity. Nope. Nope. The yep. most consistent thing besides eating and shitting that I have done in my entire life. Exercise, go in spurts. Meditation goes in spurts. But God, the old faithful. I mean, you're saying the word spurts. Yep. Um, um, all right, let's get to Make America Florida. Here we go. Golfers dive in to rescue Florida woman after she flips car into golf course pond. A Toyota Corolla was found overturned in a pond on the north side of the road. Nearby golfers dived into the water to help. That's like hanged. Um, after an investigation, 21 year old Gabrielle Barbaris was charged with driving under the influence. You think it, at least you have an excuse for your game that day. It's like, that's why we're out here to get away from them. These women are driving me crazy. <laughs> uh, uh, now would you blindly, this is actually a good question. Jump into a Florida pond. Uh, absolutely not. I, 
we had a house in Florida. My we had this little tiny house in Florida that my dad bought as an investment, and we used to go visit. But there were there was a pond out back, and there was a twelve foot alligator they named Carmichael, and I didn't leave the fucking house. I'm like, <laughs> what? Where are we living? Where, what are we in Cambodia? Fuck this! I just watched MTV inside. That was our whole vacation. Yeah. Uh, I'm not joking. I imagined it. Like I don't know what it looked like. Of course, right? If it was, if it seemed safe and it was shallow I, i'd run right you know especially the thing was upside down and my assumption is she's starting to drown but i honestly think we would both run up and i would say grab a grab an iron grab a club and cover me yeah right but but my my one of my first thoughts would be you gotta keep an alligator away from me. All they need is a limb. It doesn't even have to be a big one. Yeah. It's gonna so easily tear off my hand. Right. And that's best case scenario. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, I don't know how much they go on the attack if there's activity in the water, but uh, you do think once you get her out, though, she's your buffer. She's the co- you, that and Suddenly, oh. you're like a waiter at a cocktail party. Would you care for some old lady? Care for some drunken old lady? Oh, yeah. No, once I got her, uh, you could put down the club. I don't really care anymore. Yeah, as, right. as, it's, as it's swimming towards me, I'm going to hold out her hand and wave yeah, at it with right, her arm. Right. I'm, my hey. hand's going to be on her elbow as I flap her hand in front of the thing. Yeah, I got no sympathy for a woman that's so drunk she drives into a fucking pond. <laughs> you know what I mean? I do want to hear more about this story. Like, what was like her boyfriend on the course? Was her married boyfriend on the course? Why was she driving on a golf course? Yeah, there was a comic in Boston. I think it was Don Gavin who said, uh, he goes, I got I got I got pulled over for drunk driving and uh they kind of had me because it was the Coast Guard. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Um okay, All right, let's we make, are gonna let's make, make Georgia, Georgia Florida. Florida. Here we go. I love this story. A Georgia man impersonating police officer pulls out fake badge and attempts to arrest the real cops. Yes. Sean Brown was seen walking in the middle of the road last week and disrupting traffic. When Marietta police officers approached him and tried to speak with him, he pulled out a metal badge with the words special police displayed on it <laughs> and told the officers they were under arrest for assaulting an officer. <laughs> So it's fascinating to me. It's like, okay, you have a fake badge. There's one rule. Who do you not pull it out in front of? Yeah, right. Uh, I don't know. My family? Nope. I'll give you another guess. (laughs) This is a guy who, as a little boy, dreamed of being a police officer and kind of forgot a step along the way. (laughs) The Academy. I also thought of your confidence. I mean, the confidence on the guy. Yeah. You know, just being like, uh, they might go for this. I'm going to see if this works. I might arrest these cops. (laughs) No, it's a little bit like when they say a shark comes at you, square off against the shark, punch in the nose. Exactly. That's what's happening here. Um, All right, let's get (laughs) down to, let's go down to uh, science and technology. All right, here it is. Okay, what do we got? Neurodegenerative neurodegenerative. If you can't say that word, you may you may we have, have no a neurodegenerative disorder. We have no disorder. business doing this story. Afflicts millions of individuals across the US. However, a groundbreaking discovery by researchers suggests a promising avenue for tackling these devastating conditions. Used coffee grounds. The research team has unveiled a potential game changer in the fight against neurodegenerative diseases. Their work centers around ca- caffeic acid uh, from coffee grounds. All right, so look. Does the robot serve them to you? Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, it, it is protection to brain cells against the damage triggered by various factors, including obesity, aging, and exposure to toxic environmental co- uh, chemicals. I don't know about obesity because- if you're trying to trim down, whenever I get a cup of coffee, got to get the muffin. Nine out of ten times, if it's in the window, glazed donut, I'm getting it. Uh, yeah, I don't. 
also coffee. Is this a groundbreaking discovery? Because coffee, there's a million studies that say there might be a link to imp- improving, you know, the Alzheimer's scenario for you. That That's yeah. how I speak science. Um, so used, so what do you do with the used coffee grounds? I assume it's, uh, anal. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. What are you doing with this? Um, by the way, this is to help Parkinson's. Yeah. My Parkinson's is acting up. Can you hand me that hot cup of coffee? You haven't cleaned out the Mr. Coffee yet. Have you? Can you bring uh, the spring over the uh, filter, the f- yeah. the wet, soaking, disgusting brown filter that'll ruin everything if I drop it? Will you pick up my prescriptions at Walgreens and Dunkin' Donuts? <laughs> um, all right, let's get to business. Here we go. Yes, I love this story when I saw it. The title was The Empty Adderall Factory, and they had pictures of it. There's been a national shortage of ADHD medication. There's multiple overlapping causes, manufacturing, labor issues, supply chain, blah, blah, blah. But this company, Ascent, claims there's another factor, which is the shutdown by the Drug Enforcement Administration. Ascent produced 12% of the country's generic version of Adderall and also large amounts of Concerta, Ritalin, and Vinase. Vive, Vivance, sorry, Vivance. Inside a sense 320,000 square foot factory, a labyrinth of sterile white hallways connects 105 manufacturing rooms. And in each room, teams of topless women just crunching Adderall and methamphetamine (laughs) into pills for the rest of the country. Um, Anyway, it goes on to point out that this thing, like for instance, the CEO was in one of these uh, rooms and there was this hulking unit that he says is worth 1.5 million. I mean, that's how much it cost, but that one machine produced the Concerta tablets. And he said about 25% of the generic market would pass through that machine. No shit. And it didn't make a single pill in 2023. Whoa. Yeah. I heard one of the reasons why it's happening is because, well, I know, at the the um the trademark or whatever they call it on patent Adderall, thing? yeah, uh, copyright written, or patent, it, it, yeah, the patent expired a year or two ago, and so suddenly the prices went down, and there's less incentive to produce it because the price has gone down so much. Privatize, privatize. It always works out for the middle and the bottom. And then it's also a cycle because. Once the factory stops making it, then all the people in the factory that are on it aren't getting it. They're working less hard. Vicious circle. It's terrible. Yeah. Uh, Um, What is this one? Well, Kellogg's CEO, Gary Pilnick, has offered a controversial solution for cash-strapped families who are struggling to afford their grocery bills. Just eat cereal for dinner. Quote, The cereal category has always been quite affordable, and it tends to be great destination when consumers are under pressure. If you think about the cost of cereal for a family versus what they might do otherwise, it's going to be much more affordable. Pilnick's comments sparked a backlash online with many Americans branding the rich CEO tone deaf. Uh, One TikTok user said, this is Kellogg's version of let them eat cake, using a (laughs) phrase often attributed to the last queen of France, Marie Antoinette. Uh, do you remember Kellogg- that? I remember that line. Let them eat cake. That's what this fucking ass. Do you know what cereals Kellogg's makes? Fruit Loops, Apple Jacks, Frosted Flakes, Sugar Pops. What? A, let's let this motherfucker eat nothing but cereal for one month, and then let's take a look at him if he's even alive. Yeah, it's like let them eat cake, but with more sugar than right. cake. Right. Cake is health food compared to this shit. We'll probably get corrections, and you studied French, but apparently what she said was worse. I think she said, let them eat shit. No shit, really? I'm not, yeah, I'm not kidding. Well, I, French, I, cake and French is gâteau. And now I'll get corrections. Gâteau? Huh? I think French, cake and French is gâteau, and shit is mailed. Right. I don't know. Don't sound we like can look, We can look it up. How about this? Someone correct us. We're inviting. The first time ever we're inviting a correction. Set 
the story straight on what Marie Antoinette said. What's the exact translation? And what are the theories? Because I think it's a gray area. Otherwise, it would have been solved. Uh, This day in history. Here we go. Speaking of history. Okay, so last week, as we know, I read today's day in history for March 10. And now I'm going to read March 3rds. So basically, these two weeks are going to be this week in history. Um, Well, last week in history. That's what this really would be. Okay, let's see what we got here. I'm, uh, oh, you see, he died. I, want, I wonder when he did... All right, hold on, hold on. Let me find a good one here. Um, I should I should look at these ahead of time, but I don't. Okay. Following a high-speed car chase, Los Angeles p- police officers, officers brutally beat Rodney King, an African-American tourist. Despite a videotape of the beating, the policemen were acquitted, causing large-scale rioting in the city. So the rioting happened on this day, of what year, and I'm going to give you plus or minus one year. So you have oh, a three. God. You have a three-year window to get this. Ninety-three. You got it. Ninety-one. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was a big day. Sure was. Jesus, that was a turning point. Poor uh, Bruce Willis. So for him, we're going to, uh, in his his, uh, his declining health, uh, but this is the first episode of the sitcom Moonlighting. Oh. Aired on American television on this week. <laughs> in what year? I'll give you, well, you weren't, but Buffy, you were about 15 years off. Yeah. Buffy the Vampire Star. So I'm going to give you, Plus or minus five years for moonlighting. 1980. God damn it, I should have said four. 1985. Oh, nice. I'm on fire uh, today. Which I can make an argument that's out of, uh, maybe not. All right, here we go. Um, American bank robber John Dillinger made a daring escape from prison at Crown Point, Indiana on this day. I'm going to give you plus or minus 10 years. 1895. <laughs> That's why I gave you 10. It is shockingly recent. 1934. No way. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I pictured a stagecoach for some reason. Uh, hold on now. Oh, my God. I'm not, there's not a lot here. Uh, John, John Dillinger. See, sometimes it looks juicy. Like, here's one on Horton Foot, and I thought it was going to be when he won the Oscar or wrote To Kill a Mockingbird, but then it just says, like, when did he die in Connecticut? Um, that's why they're tricky. He so, died in Connecticut in 2008. What the fuck? 2009. His daughter is a good friend of mine, Daisy, Daisy Foot. Yeah, but you're not great. You're not a great friend. No, we're pretty good friends. I know, I know. Okay. The Boston Massacre. Harassed by a mob, British troops on this week, in this year, opened fire, killing Crispus Atticus, Attics, sorry, Attics, and four others in the Boston Massacre, an event that galvanized anti-British feelings in the lead up to the American Revolution, give or take two years. 1773. I love it. 1770. Damn it. Yep. Okay. Uh, all right, last one. American country and Western singer Patsy Cline, who was one of the classic performers of the genre, like I Fall to Pieces and Crazy, she died in a plane crash at the age of 30. In what year? I'm going to give you plus or minus nine years. She died at the age of 30. I'm going to say she died in 1972. You fuck. 1963. Oh. You got, I gave you nine years. You oh, got wow. it. Wow. All right. Uh, damn it. I thought I outwitted you on the years. Okay. There we go. All right. Well done. Let's get it down to. What uh, is the editor? 
No, we got to move. Let's go to obituaries. That's what we're moving to? Yeah, because we got... Here we go. And that's all, folks. Say no more. We're already in obituaries. All right, so since we uh, are... are, are we're trying to figure out the future on this week's Sunday papers because we're taping it a week early. I, we're going to do who we think is going to die on the week of March 10th. What? So I went to the death pool website and I picked up the top five people or maybe six people, six people. And uh, you're going to pick from them. And this one we'll do for $10. No, a hundred dollars. If one of them dies, by March 10th, the other guy owes the other guy $100. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. We might as well make it till we're back again. Um, so that would be March 17th. March or, 17th. Or really probably, rec- s- probably recording on the 16th or the 15th. Yeah, right. All right, so by, let's say by this March is 15th. Grim. This is grim, man. All this right, feels now- dirty. Number one pick is Jimmy Carter, who's 100. Number two pick is Dick Van Dyke, who's 99. Number three pick is Pete Murray. I don't know who that is, but he's 99. Number four is Alan Greenspan, who's 98. Number five is Pope Francis, who's 88. Is there something going on with him? Frank. He's sick. And then Ethel Kennedy, who's always a favorite in the death pool. She's 96. I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going Jimmy Carter. He's in hospice. That's a fucking slam dunk. Oh fuck. Let's see. I'm 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 factoring in who's super wealthy and can get like machines to keep them alive. Yeah, like Ethel Green- Kennedy's like- probably got an oxygen tank up her ass right now. Yeah, but Greenspan might have more money than Ethel Kennedy. Um Yeah. I I'm gonna go uh I'm gonna go Alan Greenspan because he had a long run, fine. And his so what, quantitative easing, I didn't quite agree with. All right, so let's go hundred hundred dollars on that. If one of us hits it, it's a hundred okay. bucks. This uh, is let's, the worst. Let's cheer up. And let's you chose up. number one. Like I don't wait. I don't get odds. He's a hundred. He's been it's on hospice a for like nine website. years. This isn't like a Vegas thing. They just. A- He's Hold out on. of, I think he was in hospice and then they let him out of hospice. You picked the oldest guy who's on hospice. What do you mean there's no, you don't think that the, their odds would pop up here? All right. You want to take him? No, because I feel too guilty. Okay. I pay you 80. You pay me 100. All right. That's fair. Okay. All right. Let's go to the funnies. Cheer up. <laughs> Wait, I didn't put a funny in here. Oh, I only put. I only put a few in. We'll do them real fast. You, they weren't. Oh, you know why? Because I wasn't. Uh, I didn't update the Google Doc, and I so I, I saw you didn't put any in. All right, I'll find one. I'll find one. I have them right here. So Leroy's talking to Loretta. Their their dinner looks charred. It looks like charcoal on a plate, God and he's taking Loretta. a photograph of it. And he goes, "No, not for Instagram. It's evidence." I love it. Uh, the next one, they are watching their wedding video. And uh, Loretta is throwing the bouquet, and behind her there are five women that are diving away from the bouquet. And she goes, "This is me tossing the bouquet just after Leroy and I got married." <laughs> <laughs> it's like kryptonite. Um, all right, and now we got Hagar the horrible. Uh, they are talking to another couple. Hagar and Helga are talking to another couple. And the woman says with her arm around her husband who has a beret on and a pretentious scarf, she goes, my Lars is a gifted playwright. And then uh, Helga says, Hagger is creative with words as well. Then she looks at him and he goes, tell him about that story you told me about why you came home late last night. And he's like, okay, what do you want? The truth? I saw a woman walking alone down an alley and I was with the boys. What do we do, honey? I'm a fucking Viking. We talked about this. It's my job. I'll give you a clue. I'm not pillaging late at night. Yep. <laughs> Fill in the blank, Helga. Um, okay. So here is the far side. Just loaded it. I've actually never seen this one. 
It is a stranded guy holding onto a piece of wood from his ship. He's in the middle of the ocean. Nothing is anywhere around him. And then there's this little island with a palm tree, and it's probably 12 feet wide. And there's a dog sitting by the palm tree, and there's a sign on the island that says, Beware of dog. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds like a dream. I I feel like I would have that actual nightmare. And the dog's Uh, just staring right at him. uh, Blondie this week, I dug deep because once again, they decided to put out six out of the seven comics this week were Dagwood at work, Dagwood at the deli, Dagwood with Herb. It's called fucking Blondie. Nobody wants to see Dagwood. Agreed. Do Do you remember I Love Lucy? Nobody wanted to see Desi Arnaz. Keep the camera on Lucille Ball and get it off of Ethel, for God's sakes. <laughs> How much older was Ethel than Lucy? Now, I don't know if this is true. Someone um, I welcome, again, corrections, that uh, there was tension and that Lucy wanted Ethel to maintain an overweight weight. Oh, no shit. Yep. Well. To, if that's true, I don't know if it is, allegedly. If it's true, that's uh, not, that's not cool. Well, it's oh no, here we go. Ball insisted that the best way for Ethel to be relatable to audiences was to be frumpy and a bit overweight. Vance did not fit B- Ball's mold and idea of Ethel Mertz. Vance had an extensive and successful theater career as a leading lady. Vance was attractive, confident, and at forty-two was only two years older than Ball. She looked 15 years older than her. Yep. That's hilarious. Uh, Blondie, let's wrap it out. This is, a, this is a classic old Blondie. And I put it in there to show the character arc of Dagwood in this series and in this marriage. He comes home. He's looking kind of dapper. He's got a little, uh, what, kind, what kind of cap would you call that? What kind of hat? Bowler hat? No, not a bowler hat. I don't know. It almost looks like, no, it's like a fedora type. It's like a fedora. He's got a bounce in his step. He's got his hands coming out towards her. And he goes, ah, it's good to get home to my little wifey. She spins around their arm in arm. I missed you so today. I thought of you all afternoon. And she says, now she's in his embrace. Do you really love me that much, dear? And now he's looking over his shoulder and he opens the lid of the pot and she, he goes, you know I do. And then she goes, Dagwood, stop looking at the pan while you're making love to me. And you think, all right, at least he's starting out strong. Now he would have just gone straight to the pot. There would have been no embrace. You know, you're right. You're right. That right? is what he would have done. Yeah. Yeah. And and she's saying, and she's pointing it out. She's so dead inside 20 years into the marriage that she wouldn't have, co- she wouldn't have cared about him going to the pot. Because that's just what the fucking guy does. Back then, there was still hope. Exactly. And I love how they used to say, making love to me. I'm just looking at these cans next to the stove. Right. Uh, Anyway. All right. Well, listen. We did it. We're early, but we're here. We're sorry. It's a short podcast. Um, But, you know, Mike's got to get to Europe and see his daughter. No, we did good. This Sudafed, this Sudafed uh, is like Adderall a little bit. Well, it, it, it has that I've been on, I've been on Ritalin it. for the last two shows, so I'm good. Now I got to drive to Huntington Beach, which is two hours with traffic, and do a show. Oh, dude, you're going to crash so hard. I mean, yeah. not in your mind, I mean. Then I got to drive two hours back, sleep, then get in the car and drive two hours to San Diego tomorrow morning. What? Why? For the day, then drive back two oh, hours that table. night. Do another show tomorrow night in Playa Vista. Then get on a flight the next morning at 7 a.m. and go to Florida for five days to see my mom. Your schedule sounds like mine. Jesus. When do you go to Florida? Sunday morning. All right. So this is convenient that we got the next podcast done. Got it done. Love it. Oh, oh right, by listen. the way, everyone hearing this, this has already happened. Are you yep. in Florida as we're as this podcast is as happening? As we're speaking, I'm back from Florida. <laughs> If you survive that craziness and you didn't literally crash on the I'll drive-by. tell you what. Here's what I'm going to do. Flor- the next Florida man that we do on this show will be me observing a Florida man in the wild. I will bring a Florida man story back. This is what I my advice to you. After your mom's asleep, you get in the car, 
you drive to the nearest 7-Eleven, you get yourself a Slurpee, you get yourself some disgusting piece of food, you sit in the car and you will see it all yeah. happen. E- either that or my mom got us tickets to go see the Yankees play the Florida Marlins in spring training. I think there may be some Florida men there. <laughs> I think I think so. <laughs> that one-two punch of uh, Staten Island and Florida. <laughs> all right, I'll... <laughs> I will bring back a Florida man and you bring back an Amsterdam man for the next episode. Oh yeah. I'll have Amsterdam stories for sure. Yeah. Um, all, all right, right safe everybody. travels. Give my love to Sophie. Yes, I will. And we will uh, catch you next time. Everybody do we want to thank, do we want to thank a sponsor or our uh, listeners? Well, we Greg? always want to tell people that, you know, you don't want all your information out on the internet. Uh, the, the, the best way to, Cut down on that is to get involved with Delete Me. If you do deleteme.com slash papers, you will get uh, 20% off on your first month. And then, uh, or is that on your whole plan? Oh, on the plan. Jeez. Look at that. And then also Game Time, Game Time app and use code papers. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks to Midcoast Media. Take care. Everybody, take it ish. Take it ish. No one. It's super important Leave it to Greg and Mike to get it all sorted The sources are suspect but it's good for a laugh The Sunday Papers, Sunday Papers Podcast